Thank you for joining the Reverend Dr. Sean Michael Greener, radio host, national pastor, author, and speaker for Sundays with Dr. Sean. Hold on tight. Here comes the truth. All righty then. Here we are. We're, uh, we're, we're ready to rock and roll. We had quite a time. And by we, I mean me. Everybody else has got it together except for me. Um, look here. Guess what you don't see? Hold on. Let me let you all see this. You don't see the chicken. Yeah, I'll tell you what. You don't see the chicken and you don't see the egg. Sean, did those eggs come missing one? I heard there was one missing. There was one missing when I opened it up. Did the chicken come before the egg? Yeah, the chicken come before the eggs. Uh-oh, we got a low network connection here. That gummit. Yeah, I'm not even sure where the receiver. Yeah, I've got really terrible reception. I, I'm sorry, y'all. Let's see what I can do to make it better. If that's any better. That's not even showing you live on Facebook. Hmm. Let's see here. All right, let's do this. We're trying, folks. We're trying. We just have a terrible connection, unfortunately. Uh, let's try to see if we can improve the... How about now? There we go. All right. We're having a heck of a time. It's just uh, the Internet up here is just really, really sketchy. Yeah, we're close to outer space up here. We're higher than the uh, than the darn uh, tower, so. Delaware is something. Yeah, there's something going on in Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. So, uh, all right, we got a bunch of people watching. Thank you very much, Jerry, Sean, Joe, Lynn. Welcome, sister. We miss you, Charles, Myra. Hey, Myra, we're gonna be seeing you guys soon. Hey, Ashley. That's our awesome realtor. If you need an awesome realtor in Delaware, whew, Ashley's awesome. She's amazing. Hey, Christina. Hey to all of y'all. I really appreciate you joining us. So, uh, anyhow, uh, hey, Jeanette. Good to see you. Great to see you the other day. Awesome, awesome person I've known for a bazillion. And loved her. She's a sweet, sweet person. Wonderful family. Um, okay, so let's see. Hopefully on Spreaker, we're, we're uh, coming through clear. Hey, JP, good man, good man. And uh, hopefully we are. I don't know. We shall see. But uh, you know how it is with Internet. Sometimes you have really sharp Internet it's hopping, and other times you just don't. So I don't really know what's behind all that, but we're going to give it our, our very best effort. So today, uh, I am excited about this message because uh, it's, it's a different sort. By the way, uh, J.D. Douglas, J. Douglas Barker, uh, unbelievable voice talent, such an awesome thing. Check him out at Romancing the Tone. You know, Romancing the Stone, but Romancing the Tone. Oh, yes, I am wearing a Georgia Bulldogs shirt. Wow. That's going to be something you all have to deal with. Uh, hey, Debbie. Yeah, bring on the judge. Anyway, so uh, romancing the st- romancingthetone.com. Uh, he's also a great bass singer. He sings with different groups, does his own stuff, and does voiceovers. You can't listen to television or radio for 24 hours without hearing him several times. He's been gracious enough to do our thing. So I hope you guys joined us. Go dogs! I hope you guys joined us uh, last week. This is number seven. But if you didn't hear number one through six, that's okay. You know, you can go back and listen to it free on Spreaker. We have a free Spreaker app. We also, you know, you can, if you're on Facebook, you can you can uh, uh, hear it on Facebook Live. Hey, Miss Nancy, good to see you. Love that lady. What a wonderful gift. What a wonderful gift. I, I've been the luckiest guy ever. I tell you what, my uh, the friends that I have, including all of y'all, um, the friends that I have made in my lifetime. Good lands. I couldn't be the luckier. I don't know how I could get luckier, really and truly. So uh, we've been going through, I wrote a, a summary of the Bible, uh, 250 words, that's hard for anybody to believe, of each book, 66 entries, um, 
one for each book. And so we did that and we're super excited about it. We're hoping to move through with this publisher and have it be, uh, Hey, Miss Marilyn, um, hopefully have it be published on a broader scale than what we were originally thinking. So they seem to like it. So now we got to make it work. Um, so the book of the Bible we're on now is judges judges. Uh, it's Shofatim, Shofatim, judges or Shofatim, which means rulers, judges, saviors. Isn't that interesting? You know, we got a lot of issues with judges right now. We have a lot of issues dealing with judges um, because a lot of judges are doing the wrong thing. They're enacting a political agenda against the will of the people, against the Constitution. They're doing that. They are what the Bible would call corrupt and evil judges. And we We'll see what God does with corrupt and evil judges. Judges, uh, in scriptural times, was such a high position. It's really, really important position. I mean, if you were a judge, I mean, that was a big, big deal. Oh, somebody wants to know what my hat is. Oxford University. My daughter went there. I mean, not for the whole time. She did an internship there. Externship or something. What did she do there? She was there. I don't know. She did something there. She brought me the hat. That's all that really matters. Hey, yay, yay. And all I got was this hat. Yeah, no, I love the hat. I love the hat. I wear it all the time. So, uh, but judges, you just need to understand, judges in this time frame were revered. Like the rabbi. The rabbis were revered. They, they had a lot of power and influence. I mean, it was, it was really, really an important thing. If you were a judge or you were a, a rabbi, that was a major, major deal. For real. Just a major, major deal. So all that said to this, yeah, if you can't get into Oxford, you go to Georgia. Ironically, my daughter was in both. <laughs> About to graduate from uh, uh, University of Georgia uh, Veterinary Center for Medicine. Anyway, who is the author? Samuel, most likely. Now, there's some dispute. And, and some people that aren't into, they don't believe in God. They don't believe in, they don't have a faith. They're people without faith. They will find a book like Judges, and they will throw rocks at it and say, hey, you know what? This book, this Bible you have, is in error. It's in error. And I have to laugh a little bit at their stupidity because, well, that doesn't demonstrate that it's an error at all. It demonstrates that they don't understand Jewish culture. They don't understand the Hebrew people. They don't understand the land. They don't understand also, by the way, that this was how many years ago, you know? And when it was all compiled, each person writing these books didn't know, okay, I'm going to, okay, we're going to have a big meeting. Everybody get together. It's a big meeting. Okay, what are you writing? What part are you writing? Okay, good. Okay, you work on that. And then you, what are you writing? Let's coordinate. No, this, this all came together in such a beautiful, amazing way, even though they didn't have email or text messaging or any of that stuff or Facebook. What you going to do? Anyway, so we think likely Samuel. I'll talk a little bit about that. The date of writing is the precise date, really and truly. You, normally we know what the date is normally we know what that date is but in this particular case we don't know we we think it commences during the reign of uh saul and continues for 350 years so it covers a big bunch of time i mean it's a big bunch of time so there's 21 chapters and let's talk about who it was written to who, what who they, who do they write this book for who do they write the book to who was their audience for this book well it was the nation of israel it was the nation of Israel. And the purpose of it was to detail the, con the, the conversion of 12 tribes into one nation. Because what people fail to realize, it's not just the people on the left or people on the right who don't believe in. Because there are people, I, I said last week, somebody picked up on it. They said, well, I don't think there's many um, uh, atheists, atheists on the right. Well, there are. It's a growing, it's a growing number. There's a growing number of people on the right. They're, they, they, they just don't attach any faith to the founders. They, they say, well, you know, maybe they did. Maybe they, maybe they were people of great faith. I don't know. I don't personally believe, but I believe in this, this, and this, and that identifies with the, um, with the conservative. So, and that's okay. I mean, there's a lot of people that think that that's not okay, but it is okay. Everybody makes a choice, right? We make a choice to follow Christ. We make a choice to, to believe in God, or we don't. They're called liberals. They're called, well, the, and, and I'll tell you, you know, remember when they voted, 
what how many votes did they have to try to get god off their platform remember a bunch of years ago they had their three times they had three votes they failed failed and failed they, they tried three times to get god taken off their platform at all the use of the word anything like that and there's so much that's been happening i love talking to my my buddy jp uh and and uh my buddy jerry and my buddy jerry about politics and as it relates to, you know the, my radio show is called the collision of faith and politics and i love talking about that and i and i think the more you know the more you know the whole picture you understand the whole picture the more you get what's really going on here these were 12 tribes of very different people right some they were polytheistic right they, they weren't all about one god this was a new monotheism was a kind of a new thing. Uh, there was a lot of mysticism. You know, within the Hebrew people, there was a lot of mysticism. Kabbalah, you know, they say, well, okay, that's a branch of the Jews, Kabbalah. You see uh, Madonna and some other people have adopted parts and pieces of Kabbalah that they like. So, um, you know, you know, if it appeals to them, that's a bit of an issue. So, uh, hey, Terry, hey, Clark, good to see you. Thank you for joining us. So this group of people were a very fractured people, and they're coming together under this one banner, this one banner. Um, it's a new thing, and there were struggles with it. Part of the reason why the journey was 40 years when it really was an 11-day walk was because you had vastly different people. Can you imagine? 12 different gangs, right? Go to L.A., Detroit. Uh, I'll tell you where they have a huge problem with gangs is in Ferguson and St. Louis, Missouri. It's a it's a major problem, major problem. But St. St. Louis doesn't usually it's not usually in your radar. Minneapolis, Minnesota, huge problem with gangs there, huge problems. Madison, Wisconsin, huge problems with gangs. Right there are a lot of cities and there are a lot of small towns all across America who are having a huge problem with gangs, huge problem with gangs. I mean, it's a big deal. Places in Delaware. There's there's a place in Delaware called Bridgeville. Bridgeville, Delaware. Tiny town. You don't, it's one light, maybe. All right, they have a couple schools there, and that's it. I mean, not much else there. They have a huge problem with gangs. They have a huge problem with crime. Laurel, Delaware. Little tiny place. Huge problem with gangs. So think of these gangs, and think of these tribes. This is a tribe of people. They've got their own government. They've got their own way of doing things. They've got their own culture and customs. Right? This was not a Hebrew people that were all alike. There was a lot of difference. A lot of people say, why all the rules in the Old Testament? Why all the rules? Well, this is why. Because we're culling 12 into one. My buddy Sean, active duty military. I was military. I loved the unity of the military. I loved it. We had one purpose. We might be fighting one second. I mean, literally fisticuffs. But you mess with one of our boys, oh, it's on. We on like Donkey Kong. You may have been punching that dude in the face 10 seconds ago, but let somebody from the outside mess with your brother. Oh, that ain't happening. We ain't letting that go. So you had people from all walks of life. In my boot camp, I had a gangbanger from Miami. Had been shot 17 times. Showed us all the bullet holes on his body. But he'd also been abused by each one of his mom's boyfriends. He had burn marks all over him. Rough, rough life from Miami, gangbanger from Miami. And he said, I came in the military because if I didn't come in the military, I'd be dead. And he loved it. He loved the unity. People from all over the place. We had another guy. We had another guy from Tennessee. His name was John Fowler. John Fowler was an awesome guy. He was an all-American quarterback. All-American quarterback. And he got in a little trouble. He had to make a change. Our uh, our main guy was from Michigan. He was a he was a lauded musician and uh, he was drum major for a humongous university. You'd know it if I said it. Got in a little trouble. Had to join the military. We had people from all over. All over. We had people from. I know this is going to shock you, but in the military, we had Jamaicans. We had people from Nolans. We had people from Guam. Yeah, that was, yeah, we had people from all over the world in our military, in our boot camp, in our, in our uh, class, in our recruit class. What I'm saying is, is initially it was a real problem. It was chaos. 
yes, the, the drill instructors were putting us in a state of chaos on purpose. Break us down to build us back up together. Get rid of all of the tribal influences that we had. All the gang influences that we had to, pour, to bring us and pull us together. That's the thing. That's the real deal there. That's the secret sauce, as my good friend Mark Hur says. You know, to bring them all together, just like in um, Center for Self-Governance. When you go in, it gets frustrating. I know our dear sister Susan drives her crazy how slow the classes move. They don't move that slow anymore. She'll be glad to hear it. They've really sped them up. But because we had to break down your way of thinking, and it takes a while. It takes what doesn't it, Sean? It takes a while. Usually about the fifth fifth week, fifth or sixth week, then it starts to gel, and it starts to make sense, and you click together. Well, okay, the Hebrew people wandering in the desert, these gangs, these tribes, they had their ways of doing things. They weren't real eager to change the way they were doing things. So they had to be brought together. So you had to have judgment. You had to have laws. Because remember, many of those tribes, murdering somebody wasn't even a crime. Wasn't a crime. They had to have regulations on that. How how women were dealt with. You had to have regulations on that. How what? what you, okay, here's a regulation we got to get in place. You got a lot of prostitutes in the church, in the gathering, in, in in the in the old gathering back then in the temples. Yeah, that was crazy. I'm telling you, what, it, was, it was nuts. It was off the chain. So then we had to have judges. We had to have sofa team. Um. So. For these 12 tribes, they're being called into one nation while reminding, if you're reading Judges, that if we're disobedient to God, this is the huge reminder. If we're disobedient to God, we're in trouble. If you're disobedient to God, you're in trouble. Now, nowadays, it's not quite that way in people's minds. In postmodern Western evangelical faith, they've taken that part out. They've taken that part of judgment out. Why? Because, well, we don't like that. We don't like that word, judge. We don't like to be judgy. Consequences, though, I need to help you understand. Consequences, though, are coming even though we're in the presence of grace. Even when grace is extended to us, there are consequences. I want to explain to you one thing. I'll give you one quick illustration, then we'll move on. The thieves on the cross, right? They were bad, right? Yeshua, good, innocent, perfect, the perfect Lamb of God. And yet that one guy... He's cussing and spitting and hurling insults and all this stuff. Meanwhile, the other guy gets it. He gets it and he says, hey, Dina. Um, he gets it and he says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Right? So he's been extended the grace of God, right? Through Yeshua. While Yeshua was on the cross. One of the seven things that he said from the cross was an issuance of grace and forgiveness and redemption. But did that take away the guy on the cross, the repentant, the penitent thief? Did it take away his pain and his suffering and his death? No, he still paid his consequences. He still had to pay his consequences. What are you going to do? It happened. I got to pay the consequences. I want to give you another example. I said I was only going to give you one, but this is a bonus. No cost or obligation to you. How about prisoners, right? I know people. I'm related to people who are in prison doing a life stretch. No chance of parole. I know people who have done horrific things, too, that they're in jail for the rest of their lives. They are not coming out. They're amazing human beings now. They were awful human beings then. My point in all this, that what I want to share with you, is that guy's still in jail. He found Christ in jail, right? He found Christ, but he still has to do his bit. He still has to do his time, right? That's how it works. That's what we do. Hey, Miss Donna. So... Our judgment and deliverance, it comes not from being human beings. It, it, you know, I, I can say I forgive, like I forgive you for not putting more of that chicken in my face. I do, amen? No, 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 that, that's really good. That was one of my mom's. Oh, you could have had if you were here, pineapple upside down cake. Oh, amazing. Um, my mom used to make it. That was a big thing. Her coleslaw. And, uh, and her pineapple upside down cake. That's always went with us to our family reunions every August. That's not important, but now I'm hungry. So, um, so, so your, your deliverance, your judgment and deliverance doesn't come directly from human beings. It comes from God. But here's the thing. Judge, 
Judge not, lest you be judged, right? So the people who don't understand Scripture, don't understand the culture, don't understand the, the people of the land and the land of the people, they don't understand all of these things, the context of this writing would say, yeah, well, that applies. I can't judge you. Listen, and, and I'm giving this a lot. This is, you know, people say this is very wrong. Well, you know, walking down the street and it's a bad neighborhood. Hey, Miss Liz and Charlie, good to see you. Um, they're walking, we were just talking about y'all. Uh, all good, by the way. And, and Liz would go, of course, because that's all there is. <laughs> right, right, right. So here's the crazy thing. Here's the crazy thing. <coughs> well, I'll have to abbreviate this because I've got to finish on time or a little bit early today. Um, they will say you can't judge. People want to use Scripture, right, as a, as a battering tool. They don't believe in Scripture. They don't understand it. They're, they're atheistic. They're, they laugh at us for believing and being people of faith, but they'll use that Bible as a battering tool, and they'll use it wrongly, right? They'll use it wrongly. They'll say, you can't judge me. But if you're walking down the street at 2 in the morning, unless you live in the neighborhood where Jesse Smollett lived, a really Tony neighborhood in Chicago, in a polar vortex, if you live somewhere or you are somewhere, let's say your car runs out of fuel, right? Or your car stops running and you're in a bad place. You better pay attention because you know what the bad place is. Am I saying that there aren't good people in that place? Of course. The law of large numbers says absolutely there, there would have to be. But should you cross the street when some thug-looking dudes come at you? Yeah, you probably should. You probably should, just to be smart. Just to be smart. Yeah, uh, my buddy Chuck, I called him a thug because he eats Oreo cookies without milk. I'm like, oh, thug life right there, man. You're hard. <laughs> I use milk. I'm sorry. Now, will I turn it down? If I, somebody comes up to me and goes, they don't have milk, but they say, hey, I have these Oreos mega stuff I'd like to give you. Uh, you don't have milk? No, I don't have any milk, but I'd like to give you these cookies. I'm taking the cookies. I'm going to ask about the milk. I'm going to inquire. You know, it could be a better experience. So they'll, they'll use that, and they'll say, we can't judge anybody. You can make judgments about people. This is not... This is not sitting in judgment of people, but you got to make judgments. I'll give you another example. This is also free. The illegal that was deported three times and shot one of our fine police officers in California. Right? You guys know she got shot, by the way. She got hit by those rounds that he fired. But then she was smart. She moved off of X, right? Keep moving, return fire. Move and return fire. And she emptied her magazine. She emptied that magazine. Hey, Lynette uh, and Derek and, and Jonathan, thank you for listening. Um, she emptied that magazine into that dude, and he's dead. He finally got deported for, for real this time. It's final de deportation. His intent was to kill that police officer. He wasn't in a fight with her, right? He just, she just pulled him over. The bad tags or something. Pulls him over, and he's sitting there all like this, and all of a sudden, ba 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 and she steps to the side, draws her firearm, locks in on him, and empties the magazine, as instructed. What's that? Yeah, amen. Yeah. So here's the thing. Here's the thing What I'm saying about that. There's a judgment that has to be made. Having been a police officer, I can tell you. There's lots of police officers that have been listening, uh, that, that I worked with. They're great cops that are listening right now. You had better make a judgment. Every situation you go into... You can't go in with all this PC crap. You can't do it. You can't. You're going to end up dead. Our combat soldiers, uh, you, ca you cannot. You cannot. The prior administration had really, really brutal rules of engagement. They were getting our people killed. The stuff that you had to do before you could return fire was insane. People would be setting, they'd be on film, setting roadside bombs, IEDs. And under certain conditions, you can shoot them or pop them in the head with a hellfire, or you can't. Sometimes you couldn't. That's insane. They're planting a bomb. You kill the three guys that are digging the hole and putting the bomb in, and you happen to hit the bomb at the same time, You accomp mission accomplished, right? But there were certain circumstances where you couldn't do that. That's gone. That's away. Love that. My point in this is, is this, is you we judge all the time, and, and people will say, well, that's wrong to be judging. Now, you know people that are all the time in judgment and never in grace. 
They're all the time judging, and they're never in grace. They never hit that grace mode. They never understand the power of grace extended to somebody. How many in the room have ever had your feelings hurt by somebody? Right? All of us, right? How many out there? I can't see you raising your hand, but you've had your feelings hurt by somebody. Now, here's the next question. How many have had their feelings hurt by somebody that you, you gained the nerve and really the maturity to go to them and say, my feelings are really hurt? I, I just got to tell you that what you said or what you did, I don't understand it. I, I thought we were friends or I thought we were family. I'm really hurt by this. You didn't wait till it festered, till it was an open sore and it's an infection raging and going septic throughout your whole body. You said when it happened, you took a beat, you took a breath and said, wow. I had that happen recently with me in a camera group I was in. Um, I was stunned by the response from these people. I was genuinely hurt by it. Now I'm, I'm over it, but I did not expect this response from this group. Yet the leader of the group, he didn't have the moderator, they call him. He wasn't on at that particular time, and he reached out to me privately and said, listen, I'm sorry for the way that they did you. That's disgusting, and I'm going to take it up with them, and I really appreciate him doing that. But he, he apologized on their behalf. He wasn't one of the ones participating. But have you ever been in that situation, and you go to that person, and you tell them that, and they're crushed? <coughs> you can see them, right? You can see them crestfallen. As you're telling them, you remember when we were at such and such and, and you said or did this thing? I, I just got to tell you, it, it hurt my feelings. Hey, Tanya. It hurt my feelings. My buddy JP, I'm an umpire. I have no feelings. I have hurt other feelings, though. Right? Umpire. We got lots of people. Umpire basically is a judge. You're judging. Are you 100%? Probably not. As sharp as he is. He's an NCAA top-notch Division One guy. I mean, he's superstar in and, and, in umpiring, you know, J.P. Richardson, do you know the Richardsons? Yeah, yeah that's J.P. He's out in Iowa. Great state of Iowa. Hey, Mr. Loris. Love y'all. Love your family. Give them all a hug and kiss for me. I mean, literally give them a hug and kiss for me. I love those people, the Brocks. Anyway, hey, Mr. Loris, look here. Huh? Georgia in the house. Anyway, I don't get too far going with that. You know how we can go. I say we, but it's really me. Um... So I, what the part I want you to understand before we move forward, uh, in, and trust me, the, the, the next part's very small, so it, don't let it bind you up too much. There, there are aspects of judging. Remember I said, this example I gave, of the people who said or did something, you maturely go to that person and you say, can you tell me why you did this? They might not even know. Have you ever been in that situation? You would probably cry, right? Uh, I have been told that. Man, dude, you really, not a lot, because I try to be really attentive to other people's feelings. But where someone has come to me and said, you know, I just got to tell you, I'm, I'm disappointed. I, I don't know why you did this. It's, they would say, it's really out of character for you. And I would hear them, and I would go, when did I do that? Obviously, having a, a serious brain injury Sometimes I say and do stuff I don't I don't really even realize I'm doing. That's no excuse. It is an excuse, but it's it it's a, it's a it's a mitigating factor or circumstance, but it's no excuse. I've probably hurt your feelings as long as I've known you guys. I've probably hurt your feelings. Um, if I knew I did, that would crush me. Probably not, but good example. I just hurt your feelings, but with the with the chicken comment. It's really good though. Seriously. Mm. Yeah, I, by the yeah, really, really, exactly. She says, I hurt her feelings every time I think he made, give him all the credit. She actually made it. They make this brisket stuff. It's nuts. Briskets and beans, is it? Uh, no, no, that was, we make beans that different was, every single time. That was steak and beans. Steak and beans. It had, it had some brisket in it. It had brisket in it. Let me tell you, y'all come here, you're going to eat good. Anyway. We've never made beans the same thing. Yeah, it's. Different beans every time. But we eat pretty healthy. I mean, relatively. Uh, let's not go. Linda keeps us healthy, right? Linda, that's your job. Bring the healthy stuff. Jerry, there's nothing frozen. There's no ice cream. I just realized that. Jerry, we try to be good. Jerry's, Jerry is the bad uncle. 
Jerry comes trotting in with his, I just made ice cream. <laughs> or cookies, right? Anyway, the thing is, is, I know, I know, here we go. <laughs> Miss Jill's running for some ice cream right now. Yeah, really, your feelings are hurt. Yeah. So, so, but when someone comes to you, you're either going to be one of two things, right? You're going to be upset and angry and defensive. You're going to shoot back at the person or you're going to go, wow, I did not know I did that. Man, how can I make this right? I'm so sorry. I, I never, I would have never, oh, these are Oreos. That's wrong. I always thought of her as kind of a saint, but Miss no Jill, Miss Jill has come. Oreos and no milk. Oh yeah, look at that. Oreos for you. See that? I'll have to get some in a minute. If I start eating those, be my black teeth all Oreo shrapnel coming out. Because I do get shrapnel on me. So, what the part I want you to really, really understand this is, in order for us to be a people that people say to me all the time. Dr. Sean, this is really a bad situation. Hey, Patrick, this is a bad, and Joanne, this is a bad situation in this country. We're falling apart. We are falling apart. We're, we're fighting one another, right? Let's say this Jesse Smollett does this thing it, before they get to the truth, which praise all praise to the Chicago PD. They kicked it on this one. They really did a good job. Let's say there were riots. Let's say people, listen, Chicago's been known to riot. And despite the, the toughest gun laws in the nation, they seem to have a lot of illegal guns there. Let's say there were riots. Let's say a bunch of people got killed. Right? Let's say buildings got burned. Cars got turned over. Police officers got shot. All this stuff. Let's say all that happened. And then it comes out, oh, this is a lie. This was a lie. You, sometimes you can't you can't put the genie back in the bottle sometimes once the horse leaves the barn <coughs> you, you can't get them back can't unring a bell it's just how it is it's how it is but we have to find a way we have to find a way within the bounds of our ideology to have some element of unity I say that in two ways on the left, they have unity. We can argue with their ideology. We can, we can say, holy, you actually believe this? Listen, states all across the United States of America right now are rushing. They are rushing to their legislature to try to push born alive legislation that says you can leave a baby to die. They say, if we're ever going to get this, it's now. These are your neighbors. These are your friends. These are the people that we've said for all too long, oh, we have to be civil. We have to be kind. And yet, their objective boiling within their evil minds and soulless bodies is how can we kill a child, an innocent child, farther along? Maybe even after birth. Boy, wouldn't that be an achievement? Here's my point in that. You, they have unity. It's evil unity, but it's unity, and it's what beats us every time. On the, on the right, on the right, we don't tend to have that level of unity, do we? Right? Because we have all these things. This is what Center, of Self Center for Self-Governance teaches. You've got to have unity and, and commonness of purpose. You can't allow one thing to tear you down in the accomplishment of the goal of supporting the Constitution and self-governance. You can't do it. But we fight. And the left takes advantage of us every time. They take advantage of us every time. They, they see our fracturedness and they push it even further. And while we're fighting amongst ourselves, they're winning in their evil agenda. That's kind of what was happening here. People were, people in, in this, this coming together, this transitioning Hebrew nation born of 12 tribes, they're coming together. It's a compilation of 12 separate but related tribes. The Israelites... I'm going to tell you, they've experienced punishment like we've never seen in this land. We, we need to be thanking God that, that he hasn't meted out judgment against us. People say, oh, you know, uh, you know, God is so judgy. God is so, you know, why, why would you serve a God so judgmental? 
And all I can say is in America, I can speak for America, we have people listening all around the world, but I can speak for people in America and I can tell you, we are darn lucky that God hasn't meted out his justice against us because we deserve it. We deserve God's wrath. How many 43 million children murdered? 43 million. 43 or 46, I can't remember the number. Either way, it's horrible. We're so fortunate that, that he hasn't brought justice upon us because we deserve it. His wrath is searing. The wrath of God for these people were disobedient. They were given rules. And they were given direction to help them, and they disobeyed. But then the other side, the flip side of it, and I talk about it in, in my book, is the, the blessings and providence of God are beyond our imagination. I've got people listening now, and I've got people listening on Spreaker that are going through some of the toughest times of their lives, and they're wondering right now, God, how am I going to make it through this? I've got people right now that are going and staying at the hospital for 16 hours a day in the critical care unit, watching over their small children, watching over their husband, their, their brother, their uncle, their dad, their mom, their wife. Something totally out of their control happened, and they're there, and they're, and they're praying to God. God, help me. You've got people right now that, that their whole lives are blowing apart. They're blowing apart. They don't know what to do. And they're crying out to God, God, help me. God, help me. Part of our process to understand the judgment of God is to understand that when bad things happen to you, they aren't always being foisted upon you, this bad thing, because you did something wrong. It's the hardest lesson of faith, isn't it? My buddy Jerry talks about it all the time. He talks wonderfully. If you go to Spreaker, go to Facebook Live, you will see uh, where he spoke here. He's spoken here a few times, and he, he, he really works on this subject so well. It's tough. I'm looking around the room. I see cancer, 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 cancer. Right? I see lost mom, lost dad. We have clients that within, within even a year, I think, lost both parents. It's tough. It's tough. I know people that have lost children. And, and, and uh, I, I have friends listening right now that have lost two children in battle. Two children. There's a mom right now listening, Navy SEAL mom, lost her one son. And then her other son said, I'm going in the Navy. I'm going to be a SEAL. And he was killed. Three and a half years to the day. Their graves at Arlington are within 10 of each other. How do you explain that? How do you explain that? One day God is going to make it clear to us. When, when we all gather on that shore, perfection will abound. Those believers will be raised. The hurts, the pain, the sorrow will all be gone. But while we're here on this side, we need rules. We need rules. Without rules, how are children when they don't have rules? Right? Nowadays, nowadays, you don't even, ha there's a whole segment of society that says, we're not going to discuss the gender of our child. At all. We're going to let them decide what gender they are. I mean, that's some things that make you go, huh? No rules. We're going to talk to our child, and our child is going to tell us if they're misbehaving, we're going to what's troubling you? As they're hacking people. There was just a case, I think it was um, Detroit, where a six-year-old hacked his mama to death. He had some severe mental health issues that were... They weren't totally diagnosed yet, and he got a knife, and the mama was trying to talk to him and beg him, you know, beg him and work, you know, all this stuff, and he hacked his mom to death. A lot of evil. That dude that, that shot that police officer, and she emptied her magazine on him. She's just trying to protect society. She's trying to go home. She's trying to go and make the streets safer, make, make the neighborhood safer for all of us. And what happens? 
she could have very easily died. Just just a couple more inches, and she would have been a dead dead police officer. And we'd have been saying, oh, isn't that terrible? Judgment. I'll say this, and then, and then I'll move on. Um, a lot of people send me a lot of hate mail about my stance on illegal immigration. Look, I don't hate those people. I want you to understand the good people that come to our border that stand at the door and knock and wait to be answered, I love those people. I told you a story about my buddy Wes, if he's listening tonight. That guy, is he not the most awesome person? I mean, it's unbelievable. From Basil. Guy's the most talented person I ever saw. He's funny. He's talented. His, his, his worship group, his worship group at his church needed a guitar player. So he went out and found a guitar. And he taught himself how to play guitar so that he could fill a role at the worship group. I want all the Wes's we can get. Wes went through a six-year process and tens of thousands of dollars to become a citizen of the United States of America. And when he hears the national anthem, his hand goes over his heart and tears stream down his face. Oh, pastor, I love America. I love America. Oh, America has been so good to me. Bon, bon. America is awesome. But we have to stand in some level of judgment. These politicians who are saying, no, we can't deport an illegal alien for a DUI because that's not a crime. First of all, they're illegal aliens. They came in without papers. They came in or they overstayed their visas or they, they snuck in through a tunnel or, or what, however they got here. Went across the border, I don't, whatever. But I just got to tell you, come through the front door. You know what the best guests of your house do? They come to the doors and they knock. And guess what they do? They wait till you say, come on in. My own family says, it's us. And they don't take more steps than till they hear me yell back, okay. You want a safe house? That's kind of how you run it. You want a safe country? That's how you run it. Got to have rules. Got to have judgment. Listen, I, I want to talk now about faith. Only by faith are we propelled to our destiny determined by God. Only by our faith. Only by our faith. Our faith is the thing that propels us forward to our destiny. God, I was just talking about this earlier today. He gives us the tools. There are some people so gifted in so many ways, you think, man, how do you choose? How do you choose which thing you go into? You're so talented. God gives us gifts. He may give one person a humongous gift that's very publicly known, and he may give another person a very quiet gift, a very private gift, maybe not as flashy a gift. But it's a blessing to many, if you allow it to be. Your destiny is propelled by your faith and your destiny when you are propelling yourself forward, one foot in front of the other, by faith in God, God will determine your destiny because you have been faithful. The great faith of the people of God, it was rewarded with good times and a healthy period for the Israelites. However, I got to tell you, Samson, right? Samson, when I was a kid, that was my biggest, I, I love Samson. Hey, Rich, uh, I love Samson, the story of Samson. Who doesn't love the story of Samson, right? I mean, that's awesome. He's so flipping strong, killed all those. I mean, you know, dude was just a beast. And yet he loved God. But he fell for the woman, the woman. And he lost everything. But the incident of Samson, it, it examines the contrast of a life of obedience to God. Because I'm like, when I'm little, I'm like, God, I don't have this conversation with God. I'm a little guy. I mean, I've done it as an adult, too. I'm not going to lie. God, look at what Samson did for you. How do you come back and do this to him? He messed up. Where's all this grace? How, how are you going to kill the guy? Even in his death, he's pushing down and causing the evil to fall and all these things. And But he dies. Why couldn't you have saved him and restored his sight? Look what you did with Job. Job served you all the days of his life, and then you restored him a hundredfold. 
after he demonstrated that he was a man of great and unwavering faith, no matter the cost to him. I just never could understand it. A lifetime of obedience. He screws up one time. And it's like, wow. It's the penalty for disobedience was so tough, despite the lengthy obedience. Why? Because God is a just God. What is he God if he's not a just God? Is he really God if he, if he doesn't have the power to move the waves and, and to align the clouds and to stop water and to spread the water and have people go in the middle of the ocean or the, 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 you know, the body of water to stop? We talked about it last week, the incidences where he intervened in nature, where he over, remember the, when I talked about blowing the trumpet at Jericho? And the walls fell down. They fell out. Sussex County saying, whew, I was so tired and then I fell out. I just got home and fell out. And Sussex County and you'll know that. Hey, Bob and Millie, good to see you. Hey, Jackie. I salute that. I talk about Sussex County and there Jackie is. God's a just God. That's how it is. That's the reality. We don't like it. We don't like it, but he wouldn't be God if he weren't just. And sometimes I have to tell you, I have to tell you. Somebody said, you know, you're terminally ill. But you don't seem that upset about it. Yeah, I'm upset about it. I'm not going to lie about it. I am. I want to live. I, I want to be around my friends and family and these great people. I want to do things for people. And I want to interact. I love all that. I love being in nature and doing photography and preaching and speaking and, and helping counseling people. I love all that. I, I That fuels me. But the reality of it is, somebody said, oh, it's so undeserving of this terrible thing. I'm like, mm, if you could have known me, you know. You don't know the whole me. Yeah, I've got a testimony in the back. He's still mad because I flipped him in the front hallway one time. He says I cheated, but I didn't. No cheating in combat. Anyway, so, uh, but the point of this is, you know, did God give me this? No. Did I deserve it? Yeah. Some people are just not honest. A lot of people, like people I visit with cancer and, and all that, I look at them and I think they don't deserve this. And I'm right. They don't deserve it. Some people do. Some people deserve bad things to happen to them. It's, we don't want to say that, but it's true. It's 100% true. Remember when I started, I talked about the people in jail that had committed heinous crimes, awful crimes. There, there, there are stories that I have read of people who committed multiple murders and rapes and all this stuff. They were, did awful, awful things. Then they got into prison doing a life sentence or death on death row, and they find Christ. They find the redemption of Ruach HaKodesh. The Holy Spirit fills them, and they are it's revealed to them what they did, why they did it, and while I'm redeeming you, there are consequences, right? There are consequences for everything. Everything. Consequences for everything. Texting and driving, there's consequences. Sometimes people pay for it. In my case, speeding. Guy's going 109 miles per hour. I get head up, hit head on, 51 miles per hour versus 92. I wouldn't do anything wrong. Nothing wrong at all. There are consequences. The guy driving the car is fine. He's fine. Didn't alter his life at all. Really and truly, if we're being honest, didn't alter his life at all. Now he has more street cred because he did time in prison. I want to talk about this real quick and then I'll be finished. The laying out of the fleece. If you read the book of Judges, now remember, I'm talking about things that are in each specific book of the Bible, right? So if you hear something, you type that into your computer, laying out of the fleece if you're not a person. Now, if you don't have a Bible, you think I'm kidding, we've sent out cases of Bibles. And if you don't have a Bible, you can't afford one, you can't access one, whatever the case may be why you don't have a Bible. doesn't matter to us what the reason is. We will get you a Bible. Contact me through Facebook if you're watching on Facebook. Email me smgreener at gmail.com contact me through my website uh, drshawngreener.com any of those ways any of those ways and we will get you a bible but if, if i say this this is the laying out of the fleece by gideon he heard the word of god and and he heard the direction but he needed more direction in his in his he wanted more he wanted more direction he wanted more proof he wanted evidence he wanted something just a little bit more most people point to the laying out of the fleece as a tool that we should use today to disclose the will of God. They're terribly wrong. 
they are terribly, terribly wrong. Faith is faith in what we do not see, what we don't know by clear physical evidence in the laying out of the fleece. It expresses doubt. It expresses doubt in God and his promises, and it clearly highlights our weak faith. There are often rash vows also. A lot of times, this talks about this in Judges 2. It's a fascinating. I'm telling you, people don't want to read the Old Testament because they go, eh, I don't want to read it. It's awesome. It's wild. It's wild. I used to love it. When Mrs. West, in uh, when I was in Sunday school as a little kid, you flannel graph, you guys remember, remember flannel graph? So she would do flannel graph, and she'd do the Old Testament. It would be wild, man. There'd be people shooting, you know, wrestling with lions and blowing trumpets blowing walls down and stuff i was like whoo that's an awesome book i was fascinated i never did i was a reader you know so anyway hey miss joan and mr mark so you'll read about in this book of judges uh there are often rash vows offered to god to rescue one from the place of their own doing but god if you help me out of this you help me out of this this one time god you get me out of this i'm going to church I will find a Southern Baptist church and I will go in every time the doors are open. Well, here's a news flash to you. You're planning on going every week because they got doors open every week, every day of every week. There's always something. You get me out of this. We make these hasty vows. Uh, like in, in Jephthah's uh, rash vow, it's in chapter 11 of Judges 29 through 40. And that resulted in him having this sacrifice. He made this vow to God. He said, God, if you do this, I will, the next person comes through the door, I'm going to kill them. Right? And his daughter was the next person to come through. It's the stupidest vow I've ever heard in my life. Only child. Their only child. Your dear daughter. Why would you ever vow to sacrifice whoever would come to the door when you return? Why would you do that? To get yourself out of something? That's stupid. It's just plain dumb. That's why we needed the book of Judges. That's why we needed some of these other directions and books. Because some of the people did crazy wild things. I talked about Samson. His his physical strength was a gift directly and exclusively. We, we can argue with that. That was from God. That, that strength was from God. But he lost himself. By the way, Emily and Zulus. I want to congratulate Emily, the pit bull. Great effort. Great effort in the Titans. Uh, it was awesome if you watched it. She's the first female Titan. The first female Titan. But she lost in the, in the semifinal. Uh, but what a wonderful job she did. What a neat, neat young lady she is. So this, this strength was from God. It was exclusively from God. But he lost himself in the mission of God through all the temptations that men and women face. They face it back then. We face it now, right? But we got phones. And we got, we, we got you know, portals to the internet. We, we got, get all these laptop, whatever. You think you have anonymity, all these different things. We have all these temptations all around us all the time. All the time. They faced them too. The nation of Israel was in a spiritual and moral decline shortly after their great leader Joshua died. Right? Joshua dies and they've got no direction. You can read it in the book. It's fascinating to watch how people fell apart. This to me echoes the importance of powerful and dependable spiritual leadership in the world, the nation, the home, the marriage, and the heart. That's what it says to me. That says, you know what? We need leadership. Out here, we need leadership. There's no two ways about it, right? We all need leadership. We can't act like we don't need leadership. We do. Hello to Alaska, by the way. Thank you for listening. Say a quick hello to Alaska. Awesome listener, A.K. Cog. So I just, what I want to say, what I want to say now in closing is this. By the nature of what we experience in life, there are times where we're going to do the wrong thing and we're going to need somebody to come alongside of us and say, hang on a second. You can't take, you, you can't get mad at every person that doesn't. Now, some people will be, that's how they are, right? They're judgy. They're super judgy without authorization to be judgy. They're super judgy. And if they can ever poke you in the eye, they will. Right? Those people ignore them. They're toxic. Move on. But sometimes, and you know those times, people will come alongside you and say, Hey, buddy, how's it going? Hey, girlfriend, how's it going? That's the reality of it. No matter what age you are, no matter how mature you are, no matter what you're doing, you, 
you you sometimes need somebody to come to you. Now, here's the thing. We talked about spiritual leadership, and then I'll close here. Maybe God is calling you to be the spiritual leader. Maybe God's calling you to be the spiritual leader. Maybe you've been shirking. Miss Nancy, she could she, she spoke to me, and she said, I believe fully 100%. I talked about it last week. I, I could have said she was a nut job. I could have, I could have heard that and rejected it. But I knew it was from the Holy Spirit. I knew it was. I knew it was. And I didn't know her. There are sometimes people are going to speak into you and say, you're supposed to be a leader. God's called you for more than this. We have to listen to that. We have to pay attention. We don't want to come under the judgment needlessly. Thank you so much for joining us. Man, what a privilege it is to join us. Hello to Florida and Texas and Tucson and Delaware and Ohio. And uh, we've got some people from Belgium. I know exactly who you are. Thank you. Uh, their book club, just to tell you guys really quick, their book club um, was an atheist and agnostic book club, a ladies book club. And they had a book club. They, they selected my book, oddly, Excellence Kill the Church. How mediocrity is destroying America. I guess they thought they would they would read it and then send me hate letters. But for whatever reason, God used that book to change them, and that now they're a, a Christian book club. How crazy is that? That's one of the reasons why I love giving Bibles away. I love it. I love it. Put it put it in their hands. So thank you so much for joining us. What a privilege it is to have you. If you want to contribute to what we do, um, that will be awesome. Um, pray for us. Pray for the people. Miss Lynn, we miss you. Susan, we miss you. Um, your spot is open right here. You know. Birthday's the twenty eighth. Oh, whose birthday? Hers. Mm -hmm. Susan's birthday's the twenty eighth. You'll be back. Yeah, I think so. uh, when? February twenty eighth. You're gonna be back in March. Oh, I thought it was. I thought it was uh, March twenty eighth. Oh, you better be glad because we would put one on for you. You should have seen. When it was what you call its birthday, we had ice cream cake. Whose birthday was it? We had ice cream cake. John and, uh, John's the Johns. Yeah. There you go. We have ice cream cake up in here. Somebody's birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, Sue. We miss you and we love you. So listen to those of you with the flu out there. This flu is bad. I'll just say this and I'll close. This flu is bad. Also, our dear uh, sister Bonnie is is sick, and. Uh, but listen, this flu is bad. Don't mess around. Don't be bullheaded. Healthy people are dying of this flu. 16 people now in the state of Delaware have died. This little tiny state, not even a million people. 16 people, and not all of them, are old and infirmed or infants. Some are healthy people. Don't mess around. I know you're busy. I know you're important. Do not mess around. Seriously, take care of yourself. God bless you and keep you. Thank you so much for joining us today. What a privilege. Thank you for joining Dr. Sean today. Please follow Dr. Sean at www.drseangreener.com and on social media at facebook.com forward slash smgreener, Twitter at The Ninja Pastor, and on Instagram at The Ninja Pastor. If you would like to support Dr. Sean's ministry and send Bibles around the world, don't forget to hit the donate page on drseangreener.com or go to paypal.me forward slash drseangreener to invest in spreading the Word of God to the world. And please download our free apps to listen to our Spreaker radio show. Thank you again for listening, and don't forget to share.